Dragon's Den is open for business. I don't often say this, but your pitch was awful. You've got to be quiet for this little bit, Peter, if that's all right. Ouch. A place where budding entrepreneurs are given a once-in-a-lifetime chance. You have this most bizarre way of answering questions. <laughs> no, 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 stop it. To present their wares to five captains of commerce. You wanted to see how credible we are, yeah. so I'm about to show you. Well, show me. Some will succeed and go on to make millions. <laughs> Others will fail and leave with nothing. Make him a counter offer. Tell him to shove it where the sun doesn't shine. The hunt is on to find the next big money-making idea. Dragons are go. <laughs> Tonight. Beans, beans are good for your heart. The more you eat, the more you have flatulent issues. Dreams will be made. I told you, son, I was going to make you a millionaire. And later... Welcome back. I'm so happy to be back again. I thought I needed to spend a little bit more money. The dragons bolster the ranks. Emma, who's your favourite dragon? Oh. You? Oh. <laughs>Hi, my name is Nodar Babuadze. I'm 50 years old. I'm originally from Georgian. My name is Nick Babuadze. I'm with my father. I'm 31 years old. We're here together uh, to present Dragons with our invention, which takes care of one of the hardest house chores. Well, I have absolutely no idea at well, all there's, what there's that a gadget on top. Be. It has got a light around it. Mm. Is it? No, it's taking water out of your toilet and using it as shower water. No. Oh, but it could be the other way, taking your shower water and using that in the toilet. Why? Well, you wouldn't want toilet water in your shower, but you wouldn't mind shower water in your toilet. <laughs> Good point. Hello, dragons. Hiya. Yeah. My name is... I'm with my son, Nick. Um, today we have one of my inventions, fully automatic shower cleaner device. If I may demonstrate that to you, just pressing the button. There we go. Yeah, yeah. So this is the first cycle. This is the detergent, sprays and just gets rid of all the grime. Um, one of the main unique selling points of our product is that it can disinfect and clean the shower surfaces, preventing the buildup of lime scale and mold. It could be done automatically uh, with just the press of a button. It's very cheap to clean, costing approximately £1.30 pence per cycle, per cleaning cycle. And most importantly, no exposure to cleaning chemicals and saves you time and effort. This is very, very unique way to do it. It's the second cycle starts. So just, uh, this is the rinsing cycle, meaning the first detergent that was sprayed on, it rinses through and disposes it. Um, once that's done, the third cycle begins, which is the polishing agent. Now what that does is, with the room temperature, it evaporates and leaves the surface sparkling clean with a good shine. We're here asking 50,000 pounds, 10 percent of our company. Can we just take your name again? I missed your uh, name. No, not. Not. Not Ari, but not his short name. Not. Yes. Not a Nick. And Nick, yeah. Thank you. An automated self-cleaning system for a shower is the offering from father and son combo, Nodari and Nick Bobwadze. What's this cycle? This is the polishing, uh, cleaning everything. It will be vaporized the room temperature. They're seeking £50,000 for 10% of their company. Their driplets will go completely. It will vaporize to abide the room temperature, so you will have a very sparkly clean. It takes about 10 minutes on the room temperature to evaporate. And that's it now? That's it, it's finished. It. Will Stephen Bartlett take a shine to the business? Have I got it? So you've made a shower for your shower? That's absolutely co correct, yes. Yeah. And just really impress upon me, why, why do we need a shower for our shower? Would you like to clean your shower? Uh, you're not cleaning your shower, that's absolutely fine. No, that's absolutely fine. But I don't really fancy to clean my shower. Simply, I wanted to help my wife. So then I, when I did it, it was really hard to do it. Really? It is hard. 
because you gotta be inside, you gotta spray all these things. Then you gotta bend down, you gotta clean it, you're gonna wipe it. But what this system does, that will dust for you just pressing the button. So why are you not having it? Okay. Um, f f I mean, what, what do most people do? Most people would just probably use the shower head, run it round, scrub it down a little bit, put some, you know, some bathroom detergents on there, scrub it down. Correct. So, can I, uh, can I uh, one second, son? I would say on this, saying that uh, this is cheap to run, and um, it is like did automatically all this whatever you want to experience by hand. The way we look at it. Um, I mean, everyone can wash their dishes after eating. They can all wash their clothes using hands. They can dry it, put it on a drying rack. But we do have dishwashers, we do have dryers. Um, this will be in the same categories. Of course, you can scrub it yourself, clean it, spend time and you know, interact with your shower to clean it. But this takes care of doing it. So, Nick, your father's the inventor. Yes. What do you do? Right, I've been trying to help him stay in the correct lanes. Um, he wanted to try different things, but uh, from my point of view, this is a product that um, once it's fully finished and formed, it needs a good introduction to the market. So we either need uh, big funds to do it so, which we are unable to do it, and also um, connections, the good marketing skills, which we lack. Look, I can honestly say I've never seen anything like it. Well, that's my patent. And it's definitely unique. Yeah. I'm just trying to work out whether this could be a business. So my key question is, what protection do you have over this concept? Well, we do have already granted UK and European patent. We've got the patent pending in Canada and the uh, US. US. So yes, we've got the patent. And how many have you sold so far? Um, we sold, not many, 15 units. In terms of creating it, how much would it cost for me to install that? The install installation, it's uh, like two hours of uh, handyman's work, like, yeah. put like that way, because it comes only just a single uh, silicone pipe and single uh, uh, cable. And this um, is the head this unit. This is the head unit. So this is houses or the companies that dispense the cleaning solutions inside the cubicle. This is a ceiling mounted. If you have a space enough, it will be recessed in. And what would that cost? How much does that cost if I want to buy one? We've got the two types of unit. One, uh, the domestic and commercial. Domestic, we've got uh, 346 pounds. It does look like a big installation and it looks like it's permanent. Is there not a way that you could design it that actually, when you want to clean your shower, you go into the shower with the unit, click it up to the top, it's a simple click system that fits on most I shower heads even, and then you literally press it, you leave it to clean, and then you take it back out. Can I add something? I, I completely agree with that. Uh, as a point of view, as a customer, uh, what you see is you buy the unit, you get a handyman to install the the device. I right? think that's the bit that I find really complicated yeah. and convoluted. It gets expensive, whereas this could be just a cleaning attachment and it does all, all the work it's for a, you. This is nice, good pitch in terms of pitching me the ideas to, to, <laughs> to next, next, next my unit. Okay. Just have a portable system rather than having the old oh, wires blimey, running I through. I see why you've got to keep your dad in his lane. <laughs> he can. The next thing, he's like, I'm on it, I'm on it. I'm going to design the next thing. You see, I don't agree with Peter because I won't be bothered. I think the beauty of your system is that you install it and it's easy. If you're asking me to click something in, plug that in and come out and switch it on and wait for it to happen, I promise you, I won't use it. That's I won't. because you're too small to reach the top. You of are. <laughs> well, that is also <laughs> true. <laughs> um, and actually, funnily enough, I think that probably your best market is the commercial market who are going to be bothered because they're paying people yeah. to go in and clean their showers. So that would is simply a numbers, you know, it cost me that to do that and it's less money than paying somebody to clean my showers all the time. So I'm not saying it hasn't got issues, I'm just saying I don't think we picked up on necessarily the biggest issues around this. And the biggest issue for me is that cost for time return. If I'm domestic, how often do you think most people clean their showers? 
Uh, we recommend that uh, two times, but depends on if you use the constant. Two times a week? Yeah, if you so use the constant. But twice a week? Yeah. Am I honestly going to spend £350 on something? I've got loads of other stuff to worry about spending my money on. Am I really going to spend it on that when it's actually something I can do quite easily in the same amount of time? So, you, when you do cleaning physically, then you need to have your time, you need to have your chemicals, you need to have physically to be there. So what I'm resolving here is the less amount of the physical movement inside the shower yeah, itself. Just being realistic, yep. I'm still cleaning the rest of the bathroom. Sure. So I've still got to go in and clean the toilet, wipe around the taps, clean the floors down. Yeah. Yes, I'm not doubting you're going to save a little bit of time but there's still the whole of the rest of the bathroom cleaning process. You're just saving me two or three minutes out of that process. And I've got to pay, as Deborah says, £350 to save that two or three minutes twice a week. That's what I'm worried about, whether people will do that. So I don't feel like I can make you an offer, and I'm going to say that I'm out. Thanks, Sarah. I'm going to tell you where I am, Nick, and not. Um, you know, I applaud you for taking on a challenge like this. It's a, it's a problem. We do need to clean our... our our bathrooms, and we do need to clean our showers, but sometimes we can overcomplicate the solution to the problem to a point where the investment in the solution outweighs the size of the problem. And I think that's what's happened here. So I'm going to say that I'm out. Thank you. Guys, um, can I just say I applaud you? I think it looks great. I think the theory's right. But I'm afraid as it stands and as you stand here today, it isn't an investment, certainly not for me. So I won't be investing. I'm out. Thank you, Deborah. Look, um, everything starts somewhere. When mobile phones were, were invented, it was an idea. Somebody decided to commercialise it and make it into what it is today. And that's what I think this is. You think it's the same as a mobile phone? No, I'm just saying how it's an idea, but is it a business that you could say investment today and progress? I would question that. Right. So for that reason, I'm out. Thank you, Tom. Nick, not. Um, look, I think when you first see this product, and you might have been thinking this even before, I'm sure the first reaction of people are sort of, really? This, is, is there any point in this? Um, I'm not sure I think that. Um, and the reason why is that if you went back 20 years and we had a conversation about sitting on a toilet and at some point that toilet is going to clean our backsides automatically, you'd go, are you serious? Well, that's happened. And that has gone on to be very successful. So, so not here's what I think you could have a conversation with some of the manufacturers out there that create the shower head. If you've got a, a really good rigid patent, you could take that to them as a concept, that they might look to incorporate a self-cleaning device into the middle of that shower head. And you could just take a euro, a dollar or a pound on every single one that's licensed and then sit back at home saying, haven't I done well? And I told you, Nick, son, I was going to make yeah. you a millionaire. But as an investment right in front of me right now, I can't make a decision to invest that money because I think there's a journey to go on. So I'm not going to invest and say that I'm out. But I do congratulate you for coming up with something that I don't think is just novelty. Thank so you. well done. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Good luck with it. Well done, guys. Take care. It was a pleasure. That's it for Nadari and Nick. They leave the den with nothing but some sound advice. Unfortunately, we didn't get the dragons. But I think there was a quite clear indication how to move, move forward. Move forward, exactly. That's what we found most useful. We've got a cleaning bottom system now. We're going to have a, a cleaning shower system. You live soon. a completely different life to me, Peter. You wouldn't dare waste that kind of water on your bottom, would you? <laughs> 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 Did you actually just ask me that? Hi, I'm Amelia. I am from London. And I'm here to show you that the food that you have so long neglected can be exceptionally delicious. 
beans. What's the thing? Beans means the more you eat, the more you... What's, the, what's that one? Beans. Beans are good for your heart. The more you eat, the more you have flatulence issues. That's the one. Peter Jones might be struggling to recall the well-known rhyme, but for Amelia, clinching a deal with one dragon in particular would be pure poetry. I absolutely love Deborah Meaden. I know she's plant-based. She stands for so many of our values. But I'll really take any of them. <laughs> Hi Dragons, I'm Amelia and I'm the founder of Bold Bean Co. I started my life hating beans, but one morning when I was hungover studying in Spain, my hand was forced. All I had in the flat was a jar of heirloom butter beans and I really couldn't be bothered to go shopping. So I grabbed the jar and spooned one straight into my mouth. This was something like never before. Turns out, my issue wasn't with beans as a food group. It was with the uninspiring tins forever at the back of the cupboard. These beans were different and the foodie in me fell in love. Four years of working in food sustainability followed. I worked for a food tech startup where we connected chefs and restaurants to amazing farmers, growers, producers. And I think this was really where I learned so much about food sustainability and some of the real issues facing our food system, but also about some of the solutions. And here I got to see the true power of beans. They're one of the most sustainable food groups we have, and they're an amazing alternative to meat that isn't ultra processed. So in 2021, I created Bold Bean Co. In just two years, we have launched in Whole Foods, Planet Organic, Booths and Waitrose, to help even more people become obsessed with beans, we have launched a cookbook. We see a world where bold beans are center stage of our breakfasts and dinners, but to do that, we're after a dragon's insight, experience, and expertise. We're offering 2.5% of Bold Bean Co. in exchange for a 50K investment. So underneath the black cloths, we have a selection of our beans to try and I can bring over the supermarket tin for you to try as well to do a comparison. A pitch that's full of beans from entrepreneur on a mission, Amelia Christie Miller. Could I try the supermarket one? I'd like a taste. Yeah. She is seeking 50,000 pounds in exchange for just two and a half percent of her business. Your bean is so much better. Oh, good. I'm so pleased. Amelia's products appear to be a hit with Stephen Bartlett. But have they also earned a meat-free Deborah Meadens seal of approval? Hi. Hi. Um, so, yes, I find myself in a very odd position. That I actually am completely plant-based um, and I eat beans and pulses because they're a very good source of lots of the things that I miss through meat. Um, but I don't really enjoy unless they're wrapped up in something else, they're spiced up. Those actually do taste lovely. What do you do to make them taste differently? So I kind of like to look at it as twofold because I think that Beans have been commodified. You know, every single part of the process has turned with price in mind because it's a commodity product. Whereas with our beans, we source the beans for flavor rather than yield. So for example, this queen butter bean grows amazingly in the, in the Polish climate. Source it from there and then it's really about our production. We have this amazing slow cook method which costs us more, but it, retains that sumptuous, delicious texture. So it's the lack of love put into the standard product, but also the amount of love we put into ours. But it isn't for me, it isn't just about taste, it's about the effect it's having on the land. I mean, and you opened up with sort of good farming, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, good farming versus not good farming. Um, so I was, I'm kind of looking for what sits behind that because it isn't just about, particularly if you're, if I'm your audience and it is going to be 
plant-based people who are really going to be a big market because this is what we need to eat. I want to know what goes on behind that. How does it affect biodiversity? How sustainable is it? What does it do in terms of carbon? And, and I think you're setting yourself up in the field that says this is good. So what does that mean? Well, I truly believe that all beans are good. Amelia, that's lovely, but I'm not asking what you believe. I'm asking what me as the consumer can feel good about when we are bothered about the reason we don't eat meat is we're bothered about wildlife, we're bothered about CO2, we're bothered about animal welfare, we're bothered about the way the land's being treated. Why does that make me feel better? Because per 100 grams of protein, beans have 90% fewer um, got greenhouse gases than beef. All beans. All, all beans yes, have... Yes, not your beans. You've set yourself up as good. Uh, we Do you have... just mean good in terms of flavour or are you saying good in terms of good for the planet? We are rooted in a mission to make people obsessed with beans and we see our beans as the best way of people loving them because they just taste delicious. OK, so your version of good is that we're going to get more people eating more beans and the byproduct of that is that it's less harmful to the planet. Yes. Amelia Tuka, um, so give us some numbers for year by year. Yeah, so we've been running for two years. Um, in our first year, we had um, 55K worth of revenue with a 36K net loss. In our second year, we had 680K um, revenue with a net loss of 36K. And then year to date, uh, we've had 550K revenue with a net profit of 65K. Okay. Amelia. Yes. Um, how big can this business get? Take me into the future. This is going to be an international brand. Like, it absolutely will. I want this brand to change people's perceptions of beans. And I want to be, you know, in 10 years' time, people to be like, ah, oh, that was the brand that made us love beans. So, how are you going to do that? I think that brands nowadays, they can't just sell what they have. They have to give something to their audience. And from the get-go, I recognised that one of the issues surrounding beans is, well, what do I do with them? So what we decided to give is beautiful recipe content. And that is why we've launched a cookbook. Um, would you like to see the cookbook? So this might inspire you to see beans in a different way. Um, Thank you. We don't just have our beans. We also have the opportunity to use whatever beans you have in the cookbook because that is our overarching mission. And we passionately believe in that. We don't want to pick bad beans, good beans. We just want people to love beans and seeing them as an alternative to meat, you know, rather than buying chicken that night, they're going to, I'm going to have butter bean puttanesca. So that's a fundamental part of our brand. Climate change. Oh. That looks lovely. Yeah, that, that's, it's absolutely delicious. But if I had that at the moment, I'd take all the beans out first. <laughs> Look, it's, um, it's really clear you've done a good job to, put it, to create a product and your love of beans has been your passion. Um, but I, I'm just not into beans. So, look, I'm, I, I've got to tell you, Amelia, I'm, I'm not your ideal investor. You can tell that. So I can't go on this journey with you. Um, no worries. I'm going to say that I'm out, but good luck. Amelia. Hi. So I will quote you what I'd written in my book. Don't take offence. It wasn't the most polite thing. They're just really expensive, slimy beans. <laughs> I was thinking, that is there's awful. no way I can invest in this business. They're just really expensive, slimy beans. And then I open your cookbook, and you've literally proceeded to spell out in the food chain why I need to know about beans. Like, you have made me think this is the future of our food industry, and I need to embrace it now. And yes, they are slimy, but that's not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> good, good slime. Good slime. <laughs> good slime. <laughs> Um, when is slime good? <laughs> when it's on a butter bean. <laughs> um, but for me, the issue I have with the business is purely the valuation. Two and a half percent at a two million pound valuation. And I know I can change that. But I can't see how I can change that into something that I can remotely start and get excited about. So, good luck. 
but I'm out. Amelia, um, I'm going to tell you where I'm at. They are, without a shadow of a doubt, the best beans I've ever tasted. But you, you're on this mission to make people obsessed with beans. And I know what that looks like. When you're obsessed with something, you need a partner that can resonate on a level with that obsession. And I just can't meet that level of, of obsession as it relates to, to beans. But you are phenomenal. <laughs> Product is delicious. Um, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm going to say that I'm up, but I, I wish you the very, very best. Thank, Thank you. you. Amelia, um, I think you are fantastic. And you've got something, but the thing that holds me back is the valuation. You know, it, it's just... It would not, you know, give me the drive to help you at two and a half percent. So I'm really torn between what I think I'd want and what I know you're going to give me. Try it. You don't know what she's going to give you. Mm. You see, I, I, I would say this. I, I would say, yeah, I can help you. Open lots of doors. Um, but it's just, I wouldn't want to insult you. Go on, Tim. Insult me. OK. <laughs> but, well, I'd give you all of the money, but I want 20%. Thank you. Um, Amelia. This is a growing category, without a doubt, for two reasons. One is people becoming more aware. The other is there's an awful lot more people going into either plant-based or just less meat, you know, so that's, that's going to drive people towards this category. So I, too, I'm going to make you an offer. Um, I think Tuca's offer was quite rich at 20%, but that's entirely up to Tuca. Um, so I will offer you all of the money, and I want... 7.5% of the business. That's amazing. Um, thank you so much for your offer, Tuka, but... You've got a great offer. I would love to accept Severus. Thank right. you so much. Yay. Excellent. Good. Thank you so Excellent. much. Excellent. That's amazing. An amazing outcome for Amelia. She leaves the den with £50,000 and the backing of a dragon who, when it comes to all things plant-based, has her finger firmly on the pulse. I feel very surreal. I mean, at one point I was like, oh, God, I'm losing all of them. And then I can't believe Deborah came through and I really wanted her, so I'm just so thrilled. Yes, Bean Queen! Oh, no, I think she's got the Bean Queen title. How am I going to celebrate? I'm going to celebrate with a bowl of beans, probably. Water. I'm Flinty, and I'm 27. Cheers. Cheers. I'm Ben. I'm 30. I can't quite believe that we're here, to be honest. Also overjoyed at the prospect of being in the den is guest dragon Emma Greed, who'll be joining the panel for the rest of the evening. Well, welcome back. It's nice to have you back again. I'm so happy to be back again. I thought I needed to spend a little bit more money. We've really missed you, Emma. Yes. Really. You especially. Yeah. Anna. <laughs> All of the dragons would bring something brilliant to our business, but Emma would be perfect for what we're trying to achieve. Looks like my makeup desk at home. That looks like Emma's uh, desk in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> I think that anyone who's kind of one step removed from the Kardashians is a pretty useful person to know. Could that be recycling? <laughs> Could that be secondhand? Oh, please, no. Oh, you can't have secondhand makeup. Shall we find out? Yeah, go on then. Let's find out. Hello Dragons, my name is Flinty. I'm Ben, and we're the founders of Skin, a price comparison app that helps people save money on their favourite beauty products and connects them to a wider community of beauty enthusiasts. We're here to pitch for a £50,000 investment in exchange for a 5% share of our business. 
We are all, to an extent, beauty consumers. But while most of us would go to price comparison sites to buy flights or insurance without a second thought, beauty consumers have been left somewhat uncatered for. This is a huge opportunity missed, so we've created a solution that the market clearly needs. Skin allows you to upload the contents of your wash bag to a virtual beauty shelf using a barcode scanner. It will then notify you whenever any one of your products goes on sale. You can use our price comparison tool at any time to find the best prices online. We've partnered with most of the UK's major beauty retailers to compile a catalogue of over 240,000 products from more than 3,000 brands. We currently consider ourselves to be a pre-revenue business, but we have processed over £18,000 worth of transactions from our 10,000 test users, which we earn commission on. Thank you so much for listening to our pitch. We're looking forward to hearing your questions. A price comparison app for cosmetics is the offering of Flinty Bain and Ben Barter. They're asking for £50,000 in return for 5% of their company. But can Peter Jones see any beauty within the business? This is pretty impressive. Thank you. Pretty impressive. You've not come across a price comparison for beauty products. How much did you put in to get this started? Um, so we have raised money before. Oh, OK. Um, so we've done two rounds of fundraising. The first round, we raised £100,000. And then we raised a further £100,000. And then with that, developed the app. OK. And how does this business make money? What's the... Give us the vision. OK, so as I mentioned, we do earn commission on any transactions that take place through the app. Now, our average commission has been 4%. The reason for this is that we've joined with retailers on the lowest possible commission. Our goal has been to get as many products on the platform as possible. But in future, there's no reason why we can't negotiate this upwards. Average affiliate commissions are between 5 and 30%. OK. I love it when I get to sit here in the den and I am the exact target consumer for a product because I am desperate to download this. It sounds brilliant. Thank you. Now, oh, hi, I'm Sarah, by the way. Hi. Um, <laughs> so what I don't understand is I don't understand anything about price comparison websites. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to educate me a little bit, OK? So you say that you've been to a lot of the big retailers mm -hmm. of the beauty products and convinced them to get on board mm -hmm. here on a 4% commission basis. Yeah. Have some of them said no? Um, in the beginning, yeah, we had some no's. We had some big yeses, though. I think we, we onboarded Boots really early. So are there any big players in the market that you would want to have on your site which aren't on there that you think is causing a problem? I, I think for, for you as a consumer, there are two that would stand out, would you say? It's, it's fair to say that um, Superdrug and another one would be Amazon. Because I was going to say, there's one product on that shelf that I buy, and I buy it from Amazon, because I know it's the cheapest place. Now, this only works for me if I can go to your site and know mm -hmm. that if everywhere I could buy that product, you are going to show me everywhere. It lives or dies by that mm -hmm. point. Yeah. And I, and I can't say, are you ever going to be able to get Amazon as yeah, an option in absolutely. your site. So we are, we are on the Amazon affiliate marketplace. We just haven't made the tech integration yet. So it would be as simple as making that integration. Flinty. Ben. Yes. It's funny because just before I walked into the den today, I was reviewing an investment proposal in something quite similar. But it's, it extends beyond beauty, so it's everything that you kind of probably use on a recurring basis. So getting a notification that the thing, those trainers that you were looking at, have now halved in price. So my question is about the competitor set. You know, who are you looking over your shoulder at? They do sound like a competitor in one respect, the, the price comparison point. Um, and there are other people that do that. Cosmetify is a, is a price comparison site, um, a website. They also have an app um, in, in the beauty space. Whereas our real unique selling point is that we give people the personalization option. So your shelf being your profile is where you, you sort of create that with a bit of love, you know. You can share your products with friends, see what they're using, and discover new things. And so you connect with a wider community, not just your mates, but maybe people 
who you, you know, respect, admire, influences, and you want to see what they're using. So the, you're, just so I'm clear, you're saying that yeah. the point of difference here is that there's this social element that is, yes. doesn't exist in the other competitors. Yeah. Guys, can I ask, is this part of a bigger fundraise? Because this isn't a huge amount of money. You could be coming up against some real competition. So is this part of a bigger raise? You're yes. absolutely right. Yes, it is. So we're raising £250,000. Um, and with that, the prime focus is, is product development to begin with. And then when we've got the product going in the, in the way that we want it to, we're going to be doubling down on the marketing that we've done so far and trying to grow as much as we possibly can. Can I ask them a question on that? Why aren't you raising 2.5 million? No, that's what that's my point. Yeah. No, no, so but, no, you no, can't ask no, that question because no, that is my question. Is, okay. <laughs> I, I'm genuinely curious on the answer. I genuinely want to know. No, now. No, I mean now. I don't think we're ready for two and a half and million. And what valuation? I, I don't think that we're in a position that we could put a, as Tuka says, a valuation but on. Ben, that's quite. Business. That's quite makes it quite difficult because um, that implies to me that you don't have the big vision, that you don't have a, this is where we're going to go, and these are the steps that we're going to need to get there. Because 250,000, I found quite disappointing. I just I just thought, oh, that's just kind of gonna patch this bit up and get me to the next time I need more money. And meanwhile, those fully funded opposition, they're going for it, you know? So you get in front of funders, and you can raise that money with the right plan. It, for me, it's not here today. But I, I really do wish you all the best. Um, but I won't be investing. I'm Thank out. You, Thank you. Um, the truth is you're going to need to raise a lot more money. And get someone in your team that's got that track record and that, that credibility of building technology businesses, and then be 10 times more ambitious, because your competitors will be. And that will be the thing that ends up break, making you break down on the side of the road and running out of cash, is that lack of ambition as it relates to fundraising. Um, I won't be on that journey with you, unfortunately, so I'm going to say that I'm out. Thank, Thank you. I think it's such a shame if we've come across like we're not ambitious. Um, I don't think you've come across like you're not ambitious. You obviously understand where the competition's at. You do seem to have this kind of unique element with the social piece of it. That's the bit of it that I absolutely love. But what I see are potentially more problems than there is opportunity. Because I don't think you've quite figured out either your business model nor the financial model that's going to support this. And my biggest issue is it's not about a lack of ambition, it's just that vision piece. And it bothers me that I can't quite figure out is this social, is this just pure commerce, is this an affiliate thing, is it a comparison thing? Like you're actually, you've got so many things going on that you haven't been able to make a really clear decision and then focus and march. For all of those reasons, I'm out. But I wish you the best of luck. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Guys, you are very credible. I mean, I really um, admire what you've done. But, but what I can tell you is that you've got to keep on raising more money and raising more money. You know, you've not convinced me that this business will see profitability. So for that reason, I'm out. Flinty and Ben, I think, you've, it's, I think it's really neat, the idea I do love the shelf concept, being able to look on the shelf. Could I look at Tuka's shelf without him knowing? Um, yeah, you no. could. No. Without him Because he doesn't share his skincare <laughs> brand. I'll tell you what, Peter, I will not mention the brand. I'll tell you why. They'll have to pay me a lot of money for me to mention it. <laughs> Tuka's like the Kardashians of the UK. Yeah. yeah. Like... <laughs> no, but I do like the idea of that. I do, I do think that you... I do think you're going to struggle to make a lot of money out of it. But you've done really well to get 10,000 customers on it at the moment. But I don't see it as a big business. So that's why I'm out. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Is it just me left? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a good job. I was the one that loved the business, isn't it? <laughs> do you know what? There's two big things I look for when people come in the den. It's a great product and people I'd love to work with and you tick both of those boxes. 
So I would love to make you an offer. I'd be willing to offer you all of the money, all 50,000. And I think a fair offer, based on what I think I can bring to the table, would be 10% of the business. Thank you. Thank you. Do you mind if we go and have a chat? You go and have a chat with <laughs> the wall. Chat with the wall. Talks a lot of sense. Against the run of play, there's a lifeline from self-confessed beauty consumer Sarah Davies. But at 10%, she's demanding double the stake that was originally on offer. Sarah, we'd love to accept your offer. Tremendous! <laughs> See, when you make a fair offer, you get a good deal. Well done, brilliant. <laughs> You had me at the post. <laughs> Flinty and Ben have done it. Amazing. Well done, guys. Thank you. Bye. Right, take care. Bye-bye. They leave the den with £50,000, along with a new customer and business partner in Sarah Davies. Ben, we smashed it. They were great. great to work. They were good. Really? They were yeah. great. You'll do well with them. Really great. Yeah. Yeah. They just need a bit of support yes. and self belief, a bit of confidence. They need you. Well done, Sarah. Yeah. Well done. I'm in the skincare business. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> My mum is going to be stalked. <laughs> <laughs> My word. Nothing can prepare you for that, but it's incredible to get an offer. Mm. Can't wait to start working with Sarah. She was the first one to say, I want to go away and I want to download this right now. And actually, I think that was all we needed to hear. That's, that's such an important thing. Well done, Flint. Well done, Ben. My name is Peony. I'm 29 years old. Stuff no one talks about is all we talk about. I think these are incontinence pads. Oh. One in three women leak. I want to go on Dragon's Den is one of the main milestones I've written down in my diary when I was a child. Obviously, I didn't know I'll be talking about bladders and incontinence then, but I believe this is going to give me an opportunity to really speak out what I believe this world needs today. Hello, Dragons. My name is Peony. I founded We Are Jude. I'm on a mission to break body taboos and build a whole new category around bladder care. 2.3 billion people globally suffer from bladder issues. Pads and nappies normalize leaking by addressing an unwanted symptom, but don't actually resolve the underlying root causes of bladder health. That's why with urogynecologists and Harvard Medical School professor, we brought to the market a bladder supplement that relieved the urge of needing to go to the toilet frequently in the day and at night. Thousands of women already joined our Facebook community and discussing their progress and improvement after Jude. Since our launch 17 months ago, we lifted the quality of life for 13,000 customers and generated 1.4 million in revenue. Having raised five million pounds so far, we forecast to make four million pounds of revenue in the next 12 months and conduct our own clinical trial to further enhance the efficacy of our supplements. We're also starting our retail journey with Boots, QVC and Chemist Direct are currently in talks with them. Dragons, I'm asking for 100K for 1%. Imagine the billions of lives we can support and building this $50 billion category together. Thank you. Products designed to help bladder issues are the offering of Peony Lee. To take the top one. Yes, please. Thank you. She's asking for 100,000 pounds in return for just 1% of her company, a number that retail giant Tuka Suleiman Thank you can't normally get on board with. Good pitch. Thank you. Oh, 1%. Oh, it doesn't agree with me, 1%. But anyway, 
let's just start this journey. So tell me about yourself first. I just want to know your background and how you got here. I'm from Hong Kong. I came to the UK when I was 15 years old on my own. My first career is in investment banking in the city. My family is an entrepreneurial family in the healthcare space. Interesting. And so they've been working on incontinence and femcare issues for about three decades. Okay, so you've raised five million pounds. Yes, I How did. How did you raise five million pounds? Um, I raised two million pre-seed round before I had a product, before I had a team. Mm -hmm. And at the end of last year, we raised another 2.7 million um, from investors, um, including the venture fund of Record Ben Kaiser, who owns Dettol, Neurofin and Durex, also invested in Jude. So just explain to me, this is a pad a plus a supplement or just some pads or what is it? Sure. So on our website, we sell supplements. Yep. We sell a plant-based pads and liners, as yep. well as a leak-proof underwear. Right. But 80% of our sales is from the supplements. Right. So how does this help menopause? One of the many symptoms of menopause is the loss of estrogen, having stress incontinence and an overactive bladder. Women, especially in the menopausal stage, um, they have this urge to needing to go to the toilet. Either they're on the road, at work, um, or you're just right at your front door and you need to dash to the toilet. And so with our soy phytoestrogen and pumpkin seed extracts in our formula, our supplements relieve most of these symptoms. Peony, hi. Hi. So you haven't undergone clinical trials yet which means that you're going to be limited on the claims that you can make on your packaging. Sure. As you rightly say, the claims that we want to make on the packaging, we need to obtain that by acquiring a traditional herbal remedies license. And once we have that, we have the right to put overactive bladder frequency and urge and with our brand across Europe. So hold on a minute, the bit you're embarking on at the moment. Yeah. What claims can you and can't you make? Sure. Because, because it's great, everything I'm saying is great, but unless you can tell the consumer, then you're just the same as all the other stuff that we can get out there. We can tell that this supplement relief overactive bladder symptoms, and it also supports stress incontinence. So relief as opposed to cure. With supplements, unless you run a multiple site 20,000 people trial with hospitals, you can't say no, you. That's the difference between clinical trials and the trials that you're undergoing at the moment. So what we're undergoing is pilot clinical trials versus the billion dollar pharmaceutical company trials that they will be running. They can start claiming cure and treat. What we can do is relief, support, quote the clinical trial studies in terms of the percentages of efficacy that we deliver. So how unique is this product? Are there other products from vitamin specialists, for example, claiming to be able to help bladder support? Sure, currently we see brands um, that have pumpkin seed extracts. Their claims that they make is not as focused as the claims that we make online. Mm -hmm. So why do you think leading vitamin companies haven't developed a product in this space? Um, I believe it's because they weren't aware how many people are actually suffering, suffering from this issue. Do you think that? Because I was surprised when you claimed one in three women leak. I am in that postpartum phase, as are most of my friendship group. It's definitely not one in three of my group. It is way more than one in three. And it's a problem that we openly talk about. If it is as easy as supporting it with vitamins, why are the leading vitamin companies not already going down this route? So I believe they didn't have the knowledge that they can, and now they can come into the space. So how long do you think it will take them to bring a competitive product to market? I would say about a year and a half they would be able to come in. But throughout these 18 months, we want to be number one recommended by urologists and urogynecologists. Peony. Yes. You mentioned that you come from an entrepreneurial background. Yeah, my parents started um, three, four businesses um, when I was young. And I didn't quite understand 
why they do what they do and why they obsess with what they do. Coming to the UK and you know, doing my own career, step by step, I discovered the only way to put your ideology across in the world is to build your own business. So Jude is the result of that. And your parents today, they're still working, still busy with businesses? Or... Sorry, I don't know why I'm emotional. That's OK. Well, because really you care, and that's a good thing. Yeah, it's really okay. nerve-wracking being here. That's all right. Take a second and... Take your time. I really didn't expect I would cry. <laughs> I thought okay. I might leak a little bit. <laughs> I didn't know I would cry. <laughs> yeah, it's emotional when I talk about my parents because um, I didn't know at a young age what they were doing. I left home really early. Um, and now it's a way to reconnect with my roots and what they were trying to build. So I'm extremely passionate about the space, not just because of the billions of lives that I can serve, but also understanding, I suppose, my brought up. Peony, I have to say, you are a superstar. Thank you. You really are a superstar. I, was, I actually started giggling to myself at one point because I was thinking to myself, I just wish Peony was running all of my companies. <laughs> I'd be much more successful if I, I was like, how do I offer her a job in everything <laughs> that I do? <laughs> no, you're just a superstar. Obviously, that's, that's a huge part of why someone would invest, but it's not the only part of why someone would invest. And the mission you're on is an important mission. When people become more aware, and when that awareness grows, so does the competitor set. That is my fear here. So I'm going to say that I'm out, but I wish you the very, very best, and thank you for inspiring me today. Thank you. Peony, I think this is absolutely a space where there is opportunity. I think you are totally attacking it the right way. My concern would be competitors in the space, but the big thing for me, to quote a very wise man, is that I just don't want to get out of bed for 1%. So for that reason, I'm not going to invest today, and I'm out. This is a difficult one, because um, you are one of the most credible entrepreneurs to have come in the den. Thank you. But. For a few percent, I'm not going to invest. For that reason, I'm out. Thank you. You, you, you present really well, um, and I don't even need to tell you that. I think you probably know how good you are because you've raised five. No, how much have you raised so five far? Five million. Five million. Um, but I have to say, the valuation is a real issue for me. And then I thought, but I'm a dragon. You're a grown-up. I can make you an offer, and it can either work for you or it can not work for you. But I am going to make you an offer. And I'm going to offer you all of the money. So that is £100,000. And I want 3% of the business. Thank you. You've been told over and over again you're very very impressive. I understand that you really get startup culture because I look at this branding, I look at the way that it's all put together and it's like a 10 out of 10. You know that there's one flaw because you're so smart. You're coming here offering 1%, 1% for a hundred grand. And anyone is going to want more of this business to be involved because we all know there's a long way to go. So I have to match Deborah's offer. I'll give you the 100 grand, but I need 3% of the business. Thank you. Peony, um, you, you've made it clear that you need this to be a mission. I'd really like to go on the journey with you. Um, but I actually think that the journey, it will be better not just with one. And I think you have a possibility of almost getting three musketeers. So I'm going to do something slightly different. And it all is down purely whether Deborah and Emma are even interested. So my offer to you would be that I will give you a third of the money for 1%. 
Emma, Deborah. Well, I guess the question is whether or not any of the deals in front of you are potentially acceptable. And I'm going to just tell you straight up. My name is Emma Greedy. I would much prefer to keep it to myself. Sorry, Peter, don't want to be rude. I know I'm a guest in this den, but I'll just tell you, at the end of the day, power's always with the founder, right? That's up to you. But I'll tell you what I prefer. OK, so, that's a, so that deal can't happen. So I'll offer you... I'll offer you 100,000, all of the money, and I'll do it for 3% as well. If I don't have our previous investors, I would definitely say yes to the deal. Um, but I would love to counter-propose and offer 100k for 1.5 per cent. Peony, I, 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 I <clears throat> when I invest, I like to, I like to follow that investment. It's never about the cash; it's about the time and the energy that I put into that investment. So, at that level, it's just one step too far. I'm out. Oh, Peony, you drive a hard bargain for a large amount of money and the kind of return, it's, it, that's a really tough ask, so... I'm going to say that I'm out. Here's the thing, Peony. I really respect you and I respect the point of view of protecting your investors. But by the same token, you know the difference somebody like me could make in your business. You know it. But it doesn't come for free and it doesn't come cheaply. And at 1.5%, I just can't make it make sense. So I'm afraid then I'm out. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Peony. Good luck. Thank you, bye. Despite a trio of offers, Peony exits the den empty-handed, leaving behind a collection of dragons perplexed by the entrepreneur's thought process. It, it, she's completely discounted the value that not just we bring to her, but we bring to her other investors. Surely her other investors would be delighted. I just don't understand that decision. I reckon she's walked out there and she regrets that. 100%. I think the dragons will regret not investing. I know that Jude is going to be a massive company and the valuation then is going to be more than enough to return what they've invested today. That is my firm belief. How's my hair look? Your hair looks fine. <laughs> Next time on Dragon's Den. This might have been a fatal mistake to put your dragons to sleep before we start the pitches. So you have not got an exclusive in the UK on... I haven't got exclusive at all. I think it's a terrible business, Peter, and I think you're probably best off just declaring that you're out. Okay, Ooh, so you quite sorry, like likes it. it. Abia, I have to say I do agree with Tuka. Finally! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> you got a job, I was sitting down for <laughs> <like> that. Finally! <laughs>